So thank you very much for uh, this introduction. Uh, as I said, I will speak about normal and uh, non-normal uh, numbers. So uh, let's start with uh, normal numbers. And the, the first question around normal numbers is, what is normal? Yeah, so this depends clearly on your point of view. So there are normal forms, there are normal extensions. There are normal subgroups, and uh, here we are interested in normal numbers. And uh, this is related to digital expansions. So we fix an integer, uh, an integer b, uh, which is greater than or equal to 2. Then we can represent every uh, real in the unit interval uh, in the following form as a sum of uh, digits as times negative powers of b. And uh, this is for b equal 10, you get the decimal system. For b equal 2, you get the binary system. So I think this is uh, very well known. And uh, we uh, call b the base. And nb, uh, this is the set of digits. And now, if you take uh, a number at random, you would expect that uh, these uh, digits are randomly distributed. So that uh, you have the same probability to see a 1 than to see a 2 or a 0 or a 9 in the decimal expansion. And this was uh, the idea of the definition by Borel in uh, 1909. Uh, he uh, defined uh, normality in the following way. He said that uh, real x is simply normal with respect to a base b if for every digit, if for every single digit, we have that the asymptotic frequency, so this is the asymptotic frequency here, uh, the asymptotic frequency tends to the expected value. So uh, what we expect, we count the numbers of occurrences of the digit d, we divide by the uh, total uh, lengths. Uh, and here I have a small mistake, so this should be a big N. Uh, and uh, we, we uh, divide by the total possibilities. And then we expect that 1 over b of these uh, digits are uh, equal to d. And uh, to have normality in general, he said that, OK, x is normal with respect to base b. If for each x, bx, b squared x, so all shifts of x are simply normal to the basis b, b squared, b cubed. And uh, what does this mean? This means that uh, here we have the shifts. We have a x, b times x, b squared times x. This is a, a shifting of the, of the representation. And here we have uh, b single digits, blocks of two digits, blocks of three digits, and so on. And uh, in uh, 1551, <coughs> Neven and Zuckerman uh, showed that this is, in fact, uh, equivalent to the following uh, definition. So we call x normal with respect to base b if for every block d1, dk of k digits uh, and for uh, over the alphabet, we have that the asymptotic frequency of the occurrences tends to the value that we expect. This is 1 over uh, the number of blocks we have of length k, and this is b to the k. And uh, so then now we have defined normal numbers. The next question is, are there sufficiently many? Yeah, or is this some rare event? And uh, yeah, since Borel is uh, the probabilist, so we have also a probabilistic result. And uh, Borel said, yeah, there are plenty of them. So almost all numbers are normal. And not only with respect to a base, with respect to all bases at the same time. So with respect to 2, 3, 4, and so on. And uh, so there are plenty out there. But it, seemed, it is very difficult to find one yeah, or to construct one. 
And the first construction, or the first construction is due to uh, Champagnon in uh, 33. He uh, simply concatenated the integer representation of the positive integers in base 10. So he has one, two, three, four, five, and so on. He concatenated them, and then he could show that this number is gives a normal number in base 10. So if you uh, count the occurrences of the blocks, uh, we don't, 10 is twice. <laughs> Ah, so, uh, okay, uh, so this this is not, I don't know what has happened here. Okay, so uh, we have one, two, three, but this gives a, a good impression uh, here. In fact, uh, one can only also show that you can, that you can stamper around. So you can say, I have one, one, two, 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 three, three, and, uh, and this also gives a normal number if the repetition, if the repetitions are bounded. Yeah, so this is uh, this can be found in the book of uh, of Jan Bichot. So this gives also uh, a normal number if you repeat if you repeat uh, if you repeat uh, a finite uh, finite amount of the of the digit representations. And if you can do is for the positive integers, the canonical question: What about the primes? And okay, yeah, the primes in forty six. Uh, we have uh, the following. We have the following. So if we uh, concatenate the the primes, uh, then this also gives a normal number in uh, in base ten. And here this gives uh, a first time a, a glimpse of how you prove this. So in the in the Champagnon case, you were simply counting how often uh, a block occurs, and since you know that every block occurs. You can exactly count how often it occurs up to a digit uh, up to a digit n, and here uh, here the idea is the following. Here the idea is the following. So in fact, what uh, they showed is you have an increasing sequence of positive integers, and uh, if for any power less than one, you have that the number of uh, elements in the sequence exceeds this power, then the so constructed number is normal to the uh, to the given base or in the in the given base. And uh, what what's the idea behind? The idea is I take all as in Champagnon's uh, Champagnon's construction, and if I have this property that uh, there are not so many uh, digits or not so many integers missing, then I say, okay, if I cross out every single integer that is uh, that is missing, then still there are plenty of uh, plenty there that have a good expansion, and uh, with this good expansion, I can uh, prove that this gives, in fact, also a normal number, and uh, this works for the primes and for other uh, other uh, large sets. However, if you take the squares, the set becomes too thin, and this approach won't work. So uh, Besikovic had to, to change uh, his construction uh, a little bit. Uh, he showed that, uh, in fact, for, for the squares, you get also a normal number. So you take 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on. And this gives you a, a normal number. And uh, his idea is uh, via discrepancy. So in in uh, uh, in his uh, in his proof, he uh, considered the the uh, squares. So the expansion of a square. So you have here some n square, and this gives you some digits. Yeah. Say this is a uh, a uh, d up to a naught. So this is the representation in base uh, B. And uh, then he said, OK, uh, it's not so interesting if we look at, at what is happening between two expansions. So I only look inside the expansions. And uh, he showed that, uh, so given a word, which is then the square, uh, uh, expansion of a square, 
he can show that these words are epsilon k normal. What does this mean? This means that uh, up to k, up, up to the block length k, each block, each block of this uh, length occurs with the, with the right uh, frequency up to epsilon. So in other words, it, the, the discrepancy of uh, this block yeah, is uh, bounded by epsilon. And uh, in his proof, he let k go to infinity, epsilon go to uh, zero, and this uh, gave him a normal number. And uh, you will see that this idea will, uh, will come uh, back uh, for the other constructions. So we will use this idea rather frequent uh, afterwards. And uh, in fact, here is the first example where we reuse this idea. Uh, so we have a polynomial with uh, rational coefficients. We suppose that uh, uh, we have that the polynomial maps the integers, the positive integers, to the positive integers. And uh, in this case, uh, we have a, a real x. So with this expansion, so we take the first uh, f1 and then f2, f3, f4, and we concatenate these expansions. And this gives also a normal number with respect to base b. And the idea is very, very similar to the idea uh, of Besikovic. And in fact, we, we cut these expansions and, and uh, we neglect the occurrences of a block between two, F, F1 and F2. And the reason why we can do this is this is a polynomial. So this is growing uh, towards infinity. And so the blocks are getting larger and larger. The expansion gets larger and larger. And so uh, the, the occurrences that occur between two blocks are neglectable. Yeah? And so the first observation is it is sufficient to look only at the expansions of Fn. Uh, and the next observation is uh, you uh, take all the expansions of the same length. Yeah, because uh, it is almost uh, unfeasible to, to say at that position in F13, I have this block. Yeah, this is, this is not possible. So what did they do? They collected all, uh, since this is a polynomial, from a certain point on, you have uh, only uh, growing so that the F is, is uh, monotonically increasing. And then you can collect all of them in a way that you have uh, f of n l, is this not work? f of n l. So this is the first one of length uh, plus one is the first one of length l. And then you have all the others that also have length l in their expansion. Yeah, you can do this, and uh, instead of looking at uh, one after the other, you look at uh, them as a whole. So you have here the L expansion, and then you get this expansion. So you have here the expansion of the next one. So this is F N L plus two and so on. And you take this one and they are all of length L. Yeah. And now the idea is to not look at the, uh, at a certain position, but uh, to to look in the whole in the whole range on at that position, and now I'm interested. Does at this, at that position uh, here is there uh, a block occurring, and with the right frequency? So I'm not uh, looking at oh, it's in n l plus two, but in average, if I look at all of them. In average, in one over b to the k cases, I have this block occurring at this uh, position, and so I, they, they did this for for each uh, for each uh, position, and then they sum up, and uh, then they get by that that uh, this gives uh, a normal number for a polynomial of that uh, of that uh, type. And in fact, I'm a little bit cheating here. Uh, they showed it for base 10, yeah, but you can uh, replace 10 by any uh, base uh, you want. 
Yeah, so the construction is is uh, indifferent for that. And um, this lead to some further work on. So by Scheusengeier and Schiefer, they, they considered the same kind of polynomials, but uh, Scheusengeier, he uh, calculated the discrepancy. So how fast this is, this is tending to a normal number. And Schiefer improved this discrepancy. Uh, then Nakei and, and Chiukawa, they showed it for polynomials uh, over the reals and also for uh, what is called the pseudo polynomial. So of this form where we have, it looks like a polynomial, but one of the, of the exponents is not an integer. At least one of them is not an integer. And uh, this makes, uh, this makes the, the method that you apply uh, uh, more feasible because uh, what you do is you differentiate, and if you have not an integer as an exponent, then you will not leave uh, in zero. And uh, in the last one, the last one here is we have an, an transcendental entire function. So a polynomial is also an entire function, and then transcendental uh, entire function is an entire function that is not a polynomial. Yeah? So we have uh, an infinite, uh, an infinite uh, power series. And uh, of logarithmic order, uh, less than uh, four third, uh, this means that uh, f of z is bounded by exponent, uh, exponent uh, of the logarithm to the four uh, third. And here four third is, uh, it comes, uh, you can, you can uh, perhaps by, by better uh, treatments nowadays, you can, uh, you can shift this to two. But at two, you get a problem. Yeah. So in two, uh, you have the, you have, you can construct functions that are more of this kind. So they are widely fluctuating. And here we have the integers. And then you have the problem that at the integers, the expansion is, is small. And in between, it's very large. And then it's small. And then you concatenate only short uh, expansions and the, the size of the expansion is not growing anymore. And uh, then all this, this whole proofs uh, falls apart because it lives on the fact that these uh, expansions of the, of the Fn, they, they are growing. Okay. And uh, yeah, these, these constructions up to now, they are very artificial. Yeah, so we have, here are some uh, numbers, and uh, it is up to now. It's completely, uh, uh, completely uh, uh, not not uh, very very difficult to uh, show for concrete examples that they are give uh, normal numbers. So like the square root of two, uh, log two in in any base, yeah, to to uh, to give a, a normal number, and uh, in fact. Uh, the Champano number uh, itself uh, is uh, transcendental, yeah, and uh, this is also true with, with the ten uh, repeated, yeah. So uh, also in the book of uh, of uh, Jan Bichot, you can find uh, a construction where where he repeats uh, certain uh, certain uh, integers and show also that this construction gives a transcendental number. And on the other hand, if you say, okay, I want to to know by algebraic integers if they are, uh, if they are normal, then uh, you have the complexity. So the complexity uh, of a, of a expansion uh, simply uh, counts the number of different blocks in the expansion. And if you have a normal number, you need that every block occurs uh, with the right frequency. So it means that it occurs at least once. Yeah. And so we have we are on this side. We are on the on the side that the complexity should be p to the power k. Uh, however, uh, the best results for for uh, for the uh, BRA expansion of irrational uh, numbers, irrational algebraic numbers, is that uh, that the complexity grows more than uh, than uh, linear. And uh, this. This is uh, far from uh, being uh, that they are that all uh, 
all expansions, uh, all blocks occur in the in the uh, expansion, and uh, this is also uh, up to uh, further uh, research on this uh, front. And now I want to uh, to uh, go to absolutely normal numbers. So we had always numbers that were normal in one base, yeah. And uh, but Borel said that uh, that almost all numbers are normal in any in all bases at the same time. So uh, almost all numbers are absolutely normal. But uh, it is difficult to, to find one, and uh, there are more or less uh, three uh, constructions. So one is uh, due to uh, Schmidt, uh, one to Sierpinski, and the third one by Alan Turing. And this is, uh, this is unpublished, uh, so you can find it in, in, his, uh, uh, in, his, uh, in his works. Uh, and uh, this letter, uh, uh, Becher and uh, Becher, Heiber and Slaman uh, to the construction of an absolutely normal number uh, in polynomial time, and uh, I wrote it here uh, explicitly what that means. So we have polynomial time if the computation for the i's digit is polynomial in i. Yeah, and uh, what they they took the construction of uh, Turing. And uh, and they used two two ideas. And the first one is for an absolutely normal number, it is uh, sufficient to show that uh, it is simply normal to each base. You don't need to show that it is normal to each base. Simple normality is sufficient. And on the other hand, uh, they constructed some nested sequences of. Uh, Biadic intervals. So in base two, in base three, in base four, one is inside the other. And yeah, you can always find them. If you go very thin, then you will, will find this uh these biadic intervals. But their uh their uh, idea was yeah, you don't have to to make them too small. So where the the where to, so this means that I4 is not uh, too small compared to I3, and I5 is not too small, so this is rather large inside of I4. And, and then they uh, construct this sequence, and uh, by this they have uh, epsilon k normality up to the base, epsilon k, uh, so epsilon 1 normality up to base t, and then they, they uh, construct a further nested sequence that uh, gives uh, epsilon uh, one normality for a smaller epsilon. And you get you get a nested sequence of, of uh, periodic intervals where this t is going to infinity, the epsilon is going to zero, and this gives you, in polynomial time, a normal number. And uh, we can consider a generalization of, uh, of the base B expansion. This is by replacing the integer b by uh, any real that is bigger than one, and in the same manner as above, you can uh, you can uh, expand uh, a real in the unit interval in the following form. You have here some digits a s and uh, some negative powers of the base uh, beta. And this sequence, so the sequence of the digits, is called the beta expansion uh, of x. And uh, here I also want to mention how you get this, uh, these digits. So you use the beta transformation. This is, uh, as you do in, in, the, in the integer case, you multiply with the base, and you subtract the integer part. And the integer part gives you, in each step, the digit. You have an at that position, this gives you one expansion, the greedy expansion, and uh, and uh, so you have at least there is one uh, for every beta, and we make a small restriction. We don't take any beta. We only take Poisson numbers. And uh, the reason is uh, that uh, Poisson numbers, they have nice expansions. So if you, if you take uh, the 
the field generated by P by, uh, by beta, sorry, and uh, you intersect it with the unit interval. Then you know that every element in there, they do not have weird expansions. They have periodic uh, beta expansions. And what is a Poisson number? A Poisson number is an algebraic integer that is greater than one. So this is greater than one, such that all of its conjugates are inside the unit circle. So they have modulus less than one. And so we have this picture. Yeah, we have here the unit circle. Then we have here is beta. And the other conjugates are all inside the unit circle. And by this, you get that uh, this has uh, this has a dominant uh, direction. The direction beta is dominant because this this is growing, and all the others have modulus uh, less than one, and so this is contracting. And uh, this uh, you use uh, in the expansions, and you can also consider the integers as uh, Poisson numbers. They are not algebraic integers; they are algebraic uh, rationals. However, you can say uh, this is also a, an integer greater than than one, yeah, in the base, uh, greater than one, and all of its conjugates. There are no conjugates, so you can say anything about them. So you say that they have uh, modulus uh, less than one, and if you take a sequence of uh, of uh, Poisson numbers, uh, any uh, finite or infinite uh, sequence of Poisson numbers, then we uh, have an algorithm that uh, that also constructs uh, in polynomial time, where a polynomial means as before, uh, then uh, a normal number with respect to all bases beta i. And here we have to face two problems. So this simply normality trick is not working anymore, because uh, if uh, if it is normal with base beta, it is not uh, clear that it is normal with respect to beta squared or, or uh, any other uh, base. And, and uh, so we have really to show epsilon k normality instead of epsilon 1 normality. And uh, this uh, chain, uh, this uh, nested sequence of intervals, here you also have uh, uh, to face a problem because uh, these these intervals, the dyadic intervals or triadic and so on, they have the advantage they are all of the same size. Yeah, so, so they are one, one half and one half or one quarter, one quarter. And uh, in the Bissot case, this is not, not the case. However, you don't here you only have two kinds of intervals. You have normal ones, they are of size one over beta. And the last one that is a little bit smaller, but you can control it. It depends on the minimal polynomial of the Piso number. And uh, by this and quantitative research, you can also construct an absolute an Piso absolutely normal number. And uh, in connection with this, uh, we have the, the the continued fraction expansion. And if you want to construct a number that is normal with respect to the continued fraction expansion, you need also a measure. And the Lebesgue measure is not the, uh, the, the, the right one. So you look at the, at the Gauss map that uh, generates in the same way as the, as the beta map the uh, continued fraction expansion. And, uh, and associated with this uh, Gauss map, we have a measure. Yeah, we have a measure, the, the Gauss measure, that is defined in this, uh, in this uh, way. And uh, this uh, measure has the advantage that it is invariant with respect to the uh, Gauss map. Uh, and this is exactly what we uh, want. And this, uh, so this is, uh, this is the right measure we have to look at. And uh, if we uh, consider so uh, the 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 continued fraction expansion of uh, of the reals in zero one. So let's this is the the continued fraction expansion here, and then I I take a block as before. I take a block, and um, this is uh, this is uh, the the block. This corresponds to the uh, 
to our uh, rears, whose uh, continued fraction expansion is starting with these uh, coefficients. And uh, then you say that this is normal if the asymptotic frequency of the block tends to the measure of this, of this, uh, this is called a cylinder set, of this uh, cylinder set. And then you have uh, an, a, a continued fraction normal number. And with this continued fraction normal numbers, Becher and uh, Jutman were able to also construct a, uh, an algorithm that uh, gives in polynomial time an absolutely normal number that is also continued fraction normal. Yeah, so it's also uh, normal with respect to the continued fraction uh, expansion. And uh, uh, my PhD student, uh, he's working on combining uh, the, the previous two. And uh, he can show that uh, if you have a sequence of uh, Pisson numbers, then uh, he has an algorithm where uh, this, uh, where in polynomial time, you get a real number that is normal with respect to every base uh, in the sequence of Pisson numbers and also continued uh, fraction normal. And this works also in polynomial time. And uh, he has to face uh, similar problems as we did in uh, the generalization of uh, the of the absolutely normal numbers to the absolute, so absolutely normal numbers. And now I want to switch to non-normal numbers. And uh, so uh, non-normal numbers, yeah, they are they are simply normal. Uh, they, are, they are numbers where the, where the frequency is not the the correct one, but if you take the middle third Cantor set, yeah, the middle third Cantor set, this is yeah, you take you take uh, the middle third here, you to say this is one third, this not one third, then you take here one third and so on, and you take the intersection of this. Yeah, okay, this doesn't work as expected, and you take the intersection and. Another way of, of, uh, of interpreting this is that this gives you the digit zero, this would give you the digit one, and this would give you the digit two in the triadic expansion. Then this would correspond to the digit zero, zero, this corresponds to zero, two, this corresponds to two, zero, and this corresponds to two, two, and so on. And so uh, a way to, uh, to see the middle third Cantor set is to take all reals uh, in whose expansion in base three, there are only zeros and twos. There are no ones. And, uh, and if we do so, we can uh, ask ourselves, can we do this in general? Uh, so, uh, so if there are no digits, or if there are almost no digits, this makes no uh, difference from a probabilistic point of view. So we take a probability vector and we say, uh, okay, let's say the digit zero occurs with the probability uh, P zero and the digit B minus one occurs with the probability P, uh, B minus one. So this is exactly here. And this is a Pesikovic uh, set. Pesikovic uh, uh, analyzed this for the base B equal two and uh, later Eggleston uh, could uh, generalize this. And if you have uh, such a set and you are away from the, from the uh, distribution, uh, from the, from the uh, distribution with one, one over B, one over B, one over B, then, uh, then you get a, a set of measure zero. And if you get a set of measure zero, then you are immediately interested in another parameter of this set, and this is the Hausdorff dimension. And the Hausdorff dimension, you can simply calculate this Hausdorff dimension as this sum here. And uh, this is not, uh, this very much uh, assembles uh, the entropy, and this is not, uh, this is not a, uh, this is a, not a coincidence, but uh, in fact, you can take any measure here on the on any probability measure on the digits 
and then you get that the corresponding Bisikovic set, uh, the dimension, the house of dimension of the corresponding uh, Bisikovic set is uh, equal to the entropy of uh, this uh, set. And if you plug in the middle third uh, Cantor set, you get you get log uh, two over log uh, three. That's uh, the the house of dimension of the middle third Cantor set. And uh, uh, so if you if you want non-normal numbers, you uh, need to say that the frequencies are not not the proper ones. So I uh, uh, introduced the, the frequency. So P is the frequency of the occurrences of the block D in the n first digits of n. Yeah. And then we have here a probability vector where the k means I take all, uh, let's see if this must be k. Uh, I uh, take the frequencies of all blocks of length k. And then clearly this has to be in the following uh, set of probability vectors where I here I have k, sorry for the typos. Uh, don't. So here uh, I have uh, a set of probabilities. And uh, these uh, probabilities, uh, they sum up to 1. And all possible frequencies are inside uh, this uh, set delta k. And uh, for normal numbers, you, take, you pick a single point in this set. Yeah, you pick the point 1 over b uh, in each coordinate. Uh, 1 over p to the k, sorry, in each coordinate. And uh, you can think about different uh, different points. This is the Pesikovic Eggleston. But you can also think about what if the limit doesn't exist. So you have a digit where the limit is not does not exist, and for another digit it exists. These are called particularly non-normal numbers. And here I want to uh, consider extremely non-normal numbers. And what are extremely non-normal numbers? These are numbers where the, the, this sequence of, uh, of frequency vectors, so this, the accumulation points of this, frequent, of this sequence of probability vectors, uh, it is uh, equal to the whole set. So any uh, distribution occurs as a, as a limit of a subsequence, yeah, and in this case, uh, in this case, uh, we call x the the number x extremely non-normal, uh, and uh, in uh, extremely non k uh, k non-normal. And if this is true for any block length, then we call it extremely non-normal. And you would expect that they are very rare. But in fact, they are, uh, they are a typical set from the topological point of view. So the set of extremely non-normal numbers is a large set in the topological sense. So if you change the point of view, so first we had the probabilistic point of view, then the normal numbers are the typical ones. And from a topological point of view, the non-normal numbers are the typical ones, and even the extreme uh, version. And uh, I want to, to generalize this in the last uh, minutes a little bit further to symbolic dynamics. So we, we, uh, we quit the, the unit interval. And we say, OK, let's say instead of the unit interval, I have a set M, a compact metric space M. And I have a continuous map, like the, the Peter transformation or like the Gauss map acting on this set. And this, so this uh, pair, M and phi, this gives you a topological dynamical system. And now the question is, where are the digits? Yeah, and the digits enter the scene here. Uh, we take a partition of this, uh, of this compact metric space. And a partition, in, as a topological partition, is a, a partition of uh, M where in, in a disjoint open sets, where M is the union of the closures. Yeah? So here I have a finite collection. But as you can imagine, we can also do this for a countable collection. Yeah? So for countable collections, you get generalizations 
of the continued fraction expansion. And for this, you get the generalizations of beta expansions uh, and uh, similar things. And uh, so uh, the, the instead of n, I use here sigma. So this is the alphabet that corresponds to this uh, topological partition. And what does this, uh, this uh, sigma describe? Uh, it gives every element an address. Yeah? So I, I take uh, the orbit of the element under the map phi, and I look in what partition it is now. Then after application of phi, it is in another partition. I, I note the letter, and so on, and so on. Capital N is capital N. Ah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and so we we. We, uh, so this uh, sigma, uh, the, these words and, and infinite sequences that give the address of uh, the elements. And uh, in fact, it is not clear as such that all sequences can appear. Yeah? And uh, so we, we, uh, we have this, this transformation. And uh, we, we collect here so that this, this simply means that the case digit is so the, the case the digit is a k yeah and uh, and uh, you take uh, here the intersection of all these uh, these uh, digits then you get if this is an empty set then you have that no element has this address yeah so no element has this address and so uh, this is an, not allowed for for my system and uh, in fact, uh, I collect all the, the set of allowed words. This must, this cannot be all, or, or it, if they are all, then in like in the, uh, in the Biedic case, uh, then it's, uh, then it's uh, good. Or here I take uh, all the allowed words, and I have a shift space that corresponds to this language. And this language is more or less generated by the topological uh, dynamics and uh, the partition I place on uh, it, and uh, and uh, as before, I uh, for every finite word I denote by uh, this the cylinder set, so the the set of all infinite sequences that start with the same letters as uh, this uh, finite word D. And uh, another in example, so. To, to make this more concrete, let's go back to the to the beta expansions. For the beta expansions, we have uh, this transformation. This uh, this is uh, t of beta, t of beta of x, and uh, here we have uh, that this uh, this uh, gives the the beta expansion and the corresponding uh, sets the corresponding partition is, as I said, they are all of size 1 over beta. These uh, pi's are 1 over beta. And the last one, the last one here, this is smaller. And uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the beta case, you get here uh, a, a language and a numeration system. And this is called, the corresponding language is also called the beta shift. And with this, uh, we have some uh, some uh, small problem, and uh, this is, for example, for the golden mean. You uh, see, with a, a small calculation, that the word one one is not allowed. So if I take one one, then this set is empty. Uh, so uh, this does not appear in the language, and uh, but these two. These two are consecutive ones, and uh, so if I if I take the next one, I will get uh, this one, and so if I do the Champagnon construction, I have to concatenate these two. But if I do so, then I have here 
two ones yeah that are that are ticking together and this gives uh, a word that is not allowed or not admissible as it that is it written here and how can we circumvent this problem and it's very easy we simply put a zero in between yeah so the idea is to to put a zero in between and then we uh, take a uh, instead of this expansion we take this one yeah so we say we concatenate the 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 positive integers and uh, the expansion of the positive integers and we put a zero in between if this is not possible and if it is possible we don't put a zero and in general this means that the underlying language fulfills the specification property so this means if i take any two words in the language then perhaps i cannot concatenate them they are not in the language but i have a finite amount of glue of uh, a word gluing word u that is uh, that is uh, the length is bounded by j then i can take this glue and put them together and i get i get uh, a word in the language and with this finite amount of glue we can also construct we can also construct uh, normal numbers non normal numbers and we can also play this uh, the game that we had before and perhaps you say yeah the specification property is this justified and if you think of normal numbers uh, then you have a distribution that is special yeah that is that is more chaotic than the other ones so think of the Cantor uh, example here I, I know that there will be no one in the in the expansion so if if uh, someone asks me what will be the next digit yeah I will say definitely zero or two I will never say one because there is no one so I have it's not as chaotic as it would be if I have one third for every digit and uh, so this uh, this chaos this is measured by the entropy and uh, the the measure that corresponds to normal numbers is the measure of maximum chaos or maximum entropy and uh, here uh, Pavlov could show that we uh, that for a specification property you get this uh, maximum entropy and it uh, and it is unique however if you if you somehow uh, weaken this specification property so here I don't have I don't have finite glue but I have uh, that uh, that it can grow with n but not uh, linear yeah so I have a glue and this is getting bigger and bigger then then I get then I get uh, so for example with this I get that this has non-uniform specification and then I get two ergodic measures and they both have maximum entropy and those support a disjoint so this makes the question which one is the right one for constructing normal numbers yeah because for normal numbers we only have one so this this seems uh, like a good property to to uh, to keep if you have specification property because if you uh, if you weaken this a little bit then you get don't get a, a unique uh, maximum entropy and by uh, this uh, I want to uh, finally show two constructions uh, that we uh, uh, made one with uh, normality and one with respect to non-normality and uh, on the normal side uh, we uh, take any uh, measure mu and uh, we say that uh, this is the norm the number is normal with respect to that measure then uh, it means that the the, the asymptotic frequency of the blocks tend to the measure of the corresponding cylinder set and in this uh, connection so I, I hope uh, Bill can excuse that I'm not uh, writing the whole sentence because it's the, the theorem is uh, is a little bit uh, longer than this I'm, I'm uh, neglecting this these things uh, so uh, here uh, we have a topological dynamical system as before we have a partition we have a language and a shift space and we say that the language fulfills this specification property then we can construct and we have an explicit construction uh, and we have uh, a, all a family of uh, constructions of normal numbers 
with respect to any given uh, uh, measure mu, and this works with the beta expansion. This works with the uh, continued fraction expansion. So for for a whole uh, class of different expansions, uh, that they have to fulfill the specification property. We construct a normal number, and the idea is very, very similar to the Champagnon construction. So in the Champagnon construction, we know that every every expansion occurs at least once. And uh, here we use the property that we have good expansions and bad expansions. So expansions that are uh, that are k epsilon mu uh, normal and others that are not, and those that are k epsilon normal, we repeat them sufficiently often, and the others we don't repeat. And by this, we can uh, make the distribution go to uh, the uh, given measure uh, mu. And the uh, final, uh, final result is uh, together with uh, non-normal numbers, you can also think of extremely non-normal numbers in the case of uh, of uh, of a Markov partition, so if you uh, have a, a partition and the language and the shift space, and you suppose that the language fulfills the specification property, then you get also that the, uh, that the set of extremely non-normal numbers is residual, so is large in the topological sense in the set M. And here again, you use that you you. Uh, uh, combine, uh, you, you concatenate the, the words with the correct uh, frequency. And uh, so you make construct a subsequence that is going in a direction of one distribution. Then you take another distribution, you go to another distribution. And since this is a, you have infinitely many, infinitely long time, you can approximate any, any, uh, any distribution arbitrarily close, and you get an extremely non-normal number in this uh, setting. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Yeah, so thank you very much for ah. this very rich presentation and lecture. So uh, we have time for a discussion, short discussion questions here. Uh, for people being online, I remind you, today in the afternoon at 3.15, Manfred and me will be online in this discussion session and also tomorrow, so you can ask there. But now to the audience, here are their questions. So I have a lot of, yeah. so let me ask uh, two of that. Uh, first of all, uh, yeah, you mentioned our work with Adrian Scherer. Uh, so one of the ideas of this investigation was to find out some meta philosophy, <laughs> having a fast algorithm for constructing normal numbers leads to say a weak discrepancy. Uh, convergence. So fast producing algorithms lead to very slow convergence to normality. This was the philosophy behind. Yes. Did you observe such philosophy also for the extension you mentioned with this PhD mm. student? Yeah. So this is this is uh, for for the extension. This is uh, work in progress. But for the for the Becher and Jürgmann, you you see also this. Uh, this uh, dichotomy. So on the one hand, if you have, if you have polynomial uh, computation time, you get a very very bad discrepancy. And on the other hand, if you have uh, if you have exponential uh, computation time, you get a good discrepancy. Yeah. And but uh, this extension, you try to work it out. Yeah, we work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Second question concerning your joint work with Bill Mans, you yes. mentioned. Is there also some quantification behind? So is it possible to get information on the algorithm producing uh, this 
And this this construction? This construction, yeah, because you mentioned it's like a chamber now, so yes. you should have some algorithm which could be analyzed. Yeah, yeah. The 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 problem is uh, that uh, that it has to to uh, circumvent all problems that can occur by the language, and so if you if you mimic Champagnon's uh, construction of a normal number, then you get many many repetitions and you get a very bad discrepancy compared to to Champagnon. Yeah, but you can definitely improve, and I think uh, Joseph uh, van der Hey he uh, improved uh, our algorithm for the special case of uh, of distributions where you have uh, where you have a probability like uh, like uh, the Posikovic uh, type for every digit you have a certain probability then you get uh, uh, alg uh, you get an algorithm that is that is uh, uh, that has a much lower discrepancy but we have to circumvent all the problems with the gaps and the, this glue and and these things and therefore we do uh, more repetitions than uh, than obviously are needed yes you, you... So it applies, uh, for example, for beta uh, piso. Yes, yes. But uh, you can, uh, if you, you have a beta which is not piso, you can have a, a larger shift with a beta piso, which contains uh, the beta shift. Ah, okay, yes. So and, and you can take the measure mu as a, any measure on this beta shift. So yes, I think you get you get the beta uh, expansion back. So Be does it mean that? This uh, theorem, in fact, applies also for all beta shifts, or uh, am I missing something? Yeah, you, you need the specification property. But you have the specification on the large shift. On the, yeah, if you, and, yeah and, then, then, and then it applies, yeah. If you take mu, uh, any measure on the, yeah. your beta shift. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. you, we only need specification property uh, for the underlying language. So that means that you don't need so property? Yes. No. So we, 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 we construct it only based on the language. We, the, where, where the language is actually coming from, this is not interesting. This was only the motivation. So to... Be, yeah, because you only need a distribution on the, on the digits. And we can approximate any distribution given on the block of digits. Only that mu is a full support. No, no. Then, then yeah, we 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 neglect all these that are not appearing. Yeah. So this this I, I left out these uh, these details. So, but if you look in in the in the paper, you find the the details. What what? Uh, so if if uh, if this has not full support, then all. Blocks that are not occurring are simply thrown away. Uh, this is this is in the Monats hefte, I think. Uh, 2016. Yeah. No, oh, no. But it's in a, in a, yeah. You can also find it on uh, at my homepage. Yeah. Further see. questions here in the room. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, so you mentioned that it's possible to construct uh, numbers that are normally in, uh, Yes. Um, are there uh, numbers that are non-normal for sensitive space? That they must be normal in another database? Ah, uh, this is, this, uh, this, uh, yeah, there is this construction by, by Schmidt, yeah. Uh, so this is, is known for the classical basis. Yes. And I don't know no, if no, it has been to... done. It's a good suggestion yes. to, yeah, yeah, to investigate. Yeah, yeah. So this for Piso, it's, it's not... Yes, yes, and yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But even but... for sets, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. basis, it's for, for, for the no, I don't. No, I'm. I'm not aware of. I had uh, the question in mind when Adrian was my PhD student, Adrian Chera, but he moved to become a meteorologist at a Zurich airport after getting his PhD. So the question is still open. 